Welcome back. Um, we continue with the rest of uh, the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take a look at what the papers are saying. Uh, we have a uh, uh, guest analyst, he's a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Jilly Johnson. It's great to have you join us on Off the Press. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. We'll start with um, a look at the stories of the front page on the front page of the Daily Independent. Uh, a few ones there. The big one, we've made impact on security, economy, uh, corruption, Buhari. We've made impact on security, economy, corruption, Buhari. Why I chose Okoa as running mate by Atiku, we can not disappointed over my choice. Okoa, a BOT to PDP members, accept Okoa as running mate to Atiku. More from the Daily Independent. Monetary policy alone cannot solve FX challenges in May PLA. Mbaka tongue lashed over comments on Peter B. Catholic Church condemns Mbaka's outburst. Lagos begins deconstruction of three structures on Ikoyi building collapse site. AIB, that's the Accident Investigation Bureau, begins investigation into Overland Airways' serious incident. You no, know, that uh, uh, Overland plane that uh, had to make an emergency landing after I caught fire. And luckily, the passengers were uh, alive. It would come out alive. A policy somersault. Poor infrastructure killed $60 billion Tinapa investment. A fund suspends issuance of licenses on free trade zones at airport. And finally, Ghani Adams writes EU, UN, others over insecurity in Nigeria. Let's move next to the nation. Uh, the nation has these headlines on its front page, the big one there. Uh, VP slot, how PDP elders dropped WK for Okoa. VP slot, how PDP elders dropped WK for Okoa. Why Delta governor was picked. My choice won't disappoint uh, Rivers governor. I'm sure they're going to be looking at the fact that the National Working Committee of the party had earlier uh, uh, opted for uh, WK, uh, whilst um, Tiku decided uh, to go, the, or the governors. Uh, also had their view articles that go with some view of stakeholders in the party. There was a vote, and we heard that Wiki had the majority, Okoa had the minority. Jilly uh, Johnson will look at some of that as we go on. CBN makes new plans for to fix forex crisis. Uh, killings or war monarch seeks state police. Burial for victims today. Really sad one. Lagos to demolish two high-rise buildings in Ikoyi. AKT Governor Shippo, INEC, distributes sensitive materials. A police deploy 17,000 personnel, 60 women observers, ready. No court nullified APC primary. Some headlines on the front page of the nation. Let's quickly go to the punch um, this morning with the following headlines. Wiki's camp fumes warns PDP as Atiku picks Okoa running mate. contrary to what the nation was saying uh, that uh, he was okay with the decision. The writers to that story, Atiku rejected Rivers, not Wiki. There will be implications, LG, LG Chair, ex-representative. I picked Okoa because he is president in waiting, qualified to govern Nigeria, Atiku. And Obasaki Akwerimaru seconders back Delta governor. INEC asks parties to submit lists today, waiting for now, the APC. Nigerians spent 3.25 trillion naira on airtime, data, others in 2021, NCC. Abuja queues, Buhari approves freight rate increase for fuel transporters. Uh, FG plans 17 airports concession to unbundle aviation regulations. And police have failed Nigerians, Akiridulu uh, declares. High inflation, fiscal deficit to persist in Nigeria, says IMF and AIB begins probe of Overland Airways aircraft's mid-air engine fire. Let's move finally to the leadership on Friday. Now, the leadership on Friday has the following headlines. The big one there with a kick-out running mate. And the headline, at last, Tinubu zeroes in on northeast as a Tiku picks Okoa. Uh, the writers to that headline, wiki unfairly treated by PDP, Oka. Uh, NNPP screens candidates, names choice today. Angry candidates protest at APC Secretariat of alleged substitution of names. We're yet to receive names of presidential candidates and running mates, says Einik. Next, Nigeria has improved on global terrorism corruption indexes. This is according to a PNB. Well, there's a report I saw yesterday indicating that uh, as far as corruption was concerned, uh, it was getting worse. 
um, Akedolu Malami differ on restructuring state police. Terrorists bomb IDP camp in Bama, injure women and children. And monetary policy alone cannot solve X, FX challenges coming from Emir Fiele. And those are headlines on the front page of the leadership on Friday. Let's now introduce, uh, bring in Julie Johnson. Julie Johnson, let's um, uh, allow you the choice to pick one of the headlines that uh, really tickles your fancy and can give us your analysis of it. Let's start with the PDP's uh, nomination or articles nomination of the Okwa's running me. It's the choice of the presidential flag priority uh, choose running me. However, if PDP is not careful with the way they've managed, with the way they've handled this election process, it might lead to the inclusion of the party. Um, from all indications, you follow the primaries. Um, um, it was very, very clear that from the onset, Article wanted to go out to his vice president. You can go back to the shots of the convention. You see um, when he was making his speech, Okua was by his side. Now, uh, if you knew that from the onset, you don't have to go about the 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 over elaborate process of giving people. Oh, if that candidature has been announced right from the convention, you have set with a lot of a lot of dust, and then people who don't have cause to dig their own twice. And you have a situation whereby you have allowed the national working committee to work on the selection of the candidate, which is the which is the harm of the party, and then they, they recommended, and you go against the recommendation, and you pick someone who. You think that the Northern Elders, according to some certain report, elders of the party went ahead and picked. They must know how to manage that particular issue. Otherwise, um, it should it be a foregone conclusion for them in, in, in River State with respect to, with respect to the, the election. And then for me, in my only, I might be wrong, I, in my only two interpretation, it is still one, 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 one arm of the party, one caucus of the party. It's like a winner takes all. Okowa, from indication supported article from the onset concerning this uh, presidential aspiration. The the other part of the party, the other caucus of the party that supported uh, Wiki and the rest, um, we still feel agreed, we still feel left out. There must be something which must be done to pacify that way. Now, coming to talk about the candidature, the choice of Okoa is it, quiet, it balances the ticket, it's it's, it's experience. He has all what it takes to be the vice president. And then more or less like it's a bridge. A bridge in the sense that it's in the south, it's in the south-south by political design. But it's of, it's of south, south east, it's of south east heritage. So that is one of the things that is that is going on for him. But overall, it is the way the, the issue was handled. There's no need for the ceremony. There's no need for the process. When you look at right from the onset, this is the person you are going to pick for your vibe, for your running mate. You have gone ahead to eat the bull by the bull, and then you proceed. You proceed with it. So you see how they resolve that particular, that particular, that particular. Because, like I said, over time, it is the party that is able to manage this post-convention crisis very well. That that win this 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 election. That win this, that win this presidential presidential election. Most parties that have lost the election have lost the election as a result of internal inclusion. That was what happened to PDP in 2014. Uh, for them to lose the election to to do it, and we have seen across states, whereby it's as a result of internal inclusions that make parties to lose the gubernatorial elections or other elections within 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 their states. For their state gubernatorial and other elections. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Like I said, um, the political scene, the political theater and drama started. Just grab your popcorn and get a soft drink and take a, um, a front seat row and enjoy the drama as it unfolds. Interesting. <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to have a bag of that popcorn at home. Uh, it would be everywhere I go. Um, we stay with the leadership on Friday because they've given some space and attention to uh, uh, economic issues. Um, quoting a former presidential aspirant with the All Progressives Congress, 
and uh, incidentally, um, uh, Chairman or Governor of the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, Gordon Mayfield. I think you can add that title to his uh, list of appendages now. Um, he's quoted as saying that the monetary policy alone cannot solve the forex challenges Nigeria is facing. Of course, with um, the dwindling, uh, increasingly dwindling fortunes of the Naira, I'm saying that uh, monetary policies alone cannot solve that. Is this an admittance? You think that um, things may be out of his hands? Is he just, his hands? Is, is, is he just looking for his number? Or is he daydreaming? I'm just asking this question. It's very clear that um, when you are borrowing government money, I, I think it was one of the headlines said that two days ago or yesterday that um, um, Central Bank has borrowed federal government 19 trillion naira or something like that in terms of money. Now, everyone knows that for you to grow your economy, you need put, to manage put your fiscal policies and then your monetary policies. But our emphasis has always been on monetary policy. And that has been the reason why um, the value of Naira is appreciating over time compared to other currencies, even currencies in Africa, not to even talk of international, international currencies. Because we, 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 the focus has always been on spending and spending and spending and spending and spending and spending and spending. And spending. We, 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 didn't, we didn't manage, um, we, didn't, we didn't manage we didn't manage that that very, very well. And we are not spending based on what we had, which makes us to be fiscal responsible. We are spending based on borrowing. So you are borrowing, you are using monetary policies to cover up for your We seem to have a bit of a network challenge. Yeah? Um, we expect Judy Johnson will be joining us uh, um, very shortly as uh, his network becomes uh, better. But he's still watching the breakfast and of the press is a, a daily look at the headlines of the pages of the Nigerian newspapers with analysis from our guests, um, eminent erudite guests like J.D. Johnson, who I'm told is back with us. Uh, J.D. Johnson, if you're here and you can hear me, please continue with the point you were making. Thank you very much. So, is it just... I, 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 everyone knew quite right that we went to borrowing. And then the focus for CBN is actually our exchange rate. And then you have two parallel markets. It's only in Nigeria that you have two markets for, 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 for the exchange rate. I've never seen anywhere in the world, and I like to be educated. I'm open to new, to, 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 to new ideas, to new knowledge. I've mm -hmm. never seen anywhere in the world where you have official market, and then you have a parallel market with respect to, with respect to, um, country's monetary policy and exchange rate. So it's, 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 the man has been there for more than seven years and is saying all what he's saying. I think what the federal go, what the government should have done since the man ventured into politics to have is to have to have asked him to leave because there's nothing whatsoever that one can show. Look at the exchange rate of 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 naira to dollar, naira to pounds and naira to other African countries on on that other currencies in Africa under its tenor. And then you know that its tenor, in my view, has been a disaster with respect to monetary policy for, for Nigeria. And then the, the bank that should, should maintain fiscal discipline itself is borrowing government left, right, and center. Thank you. Hmm. All right, baby, Nigeria needs uh, a, stingy, a stingy man as president <laughs> to be yeah, able to yeah. enforce that fiscal discipline. But um, we're still with the leadership on Friday because interestingly, they're all saying that. Uh, uh, the quote in President Buhari is saying that Nigeria has improved on the global terrorism and corruption indexes. Now, we are used to, um, to, to talking about these indexes and each time it's released, we give people an opportunity to talk about it. And most times it's always that Nigeria has gotten worse. But um, President Mohamed Buhari is quoted as saying by the paper uh, uh, that, that Nigeria has recorded significant improvement on the global terrorism and corruption uh, ranking. Um, he said on the Global Terrorism Index, Nigeria has moved from fourth to sixth position. Uh, fourth to sixth, let's put it that way. While the country is uh, now on the world uh, free, is now the world free nations on the corrupt uh, corruption chart. I, I don't know what that means, but um, that's what the paper is saying. Uh, well, so maybe we should Have celebrate you, uh, moving from number four to number six. Uh, well, there is a saying in my local dialect. 
oh, pass to oh, fail, oh, who can class come? You did not pass, you did not fail, but you are not leaving the class. Um, I've never seen a situation whereby someone will set an exam and then uh, we examine himself, we grade and score himself at the same time. Now, we move from number four to number six. What remarkable, how many nations are in the world? And then it's very clear if the president said, um, we've done well with respect to security, with respect to uh, terrorism, and with respect to corruption. Uh, we have a case in hand where the, the accountant general of the Federation was accused of corruption. We have a case whereby people were, went for service on Sunday and then they were murdered, cold blooded. We have a situation whereby in just this week, people are returning from a wedding program. 55, 55 people are abducted. So I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't want to join issues. The president is uh, is an enablers. Um, it's what they they, 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 they they let the president know that you know he, he he knows about because I've said it. Where we have a situation whereby the president is pulled up in Nasura, the president uh, does not travel through the length and breadth of the country. I, how many state visit has this president impact? How many? How many states under his tenure? How many states has he visited? Compare the state visit under Jonathan. Let's even use Jonathan as benchmark. Then let's talk about Obasuto as benchmark. How many states has he visited or state visit? Uh, the president official residence is Asuro. His office is in Asuro. And I've said it, it, it makes them to be far away from the reality of what is happening to, to an average to an average Nigerian. Let the president not take let him come from Abuja to Lagos by road. Let him travel. He's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. They have what it takes to travel. Let the president travel to, to Casina by road and not by here. And this sometimes this is how president should travel for them to see the length and breadth of the country they are going. After all, when they are campaigning, they will travel to the length and breadth of the country. When it comes to governance, they will be holed up in their in the official residence and offices. So which takes them away far, far away. From, from reality. I'm not sure the president is close to reality, what he's saying, because the, the first responsibility of government is to secure the lives and property of a citizen who can, who, who amongst us can truly say, I can travel to anywhere I want to travel to in Nigeria. Hmm. All right, all right, interesting. Um, some would say the president should move around Abuja to start with. Uh, maybe you would see the the petrol queues and um, the black market uh, people selling uh, petrol exactly. on the you, streets you, of Abuja. You have, you have a situation whereby there is a break club, break down of law and order where people take take um, take laws into their own hand on the basis of or someone blaspheme or someone said something which is contrary to their religious faith. About that. All right. Uh, Okay, J.D. Johnson, let, let, let's move to the punch in the He has a, a, an interesting one. And I think this is um, a, a reaction uh, to the our killings, um, uh, what we call, what has been called Labour Black Sunday. Well, uh, it, it put out this story on the top of that front page. Police have failed Nigerians, Akeridolu declares. Police have failed Nigerians, Akeridolu declares. What, what's, what's your take on this? The governor of, of uh, Ondo State, where our situate is now saying something like this. In the past, I used to blame the British colonialists for, for bestowing on us a system which they didn't practice. And the, the colonialists came and then they gave us a unitary police system, which is to have a centralized command structure, which is meant to facilitate the exploitation of the various colonies and to make everyone to throw in line, to control everybody into 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 the policies and decisions of, of the group. But however, we've been independent for many years. So there's nothing that stops us from, us from reforming the police and making the police to, dis, to be decentralized. And when people, it is, if you can't have state policing, decentralize this command structure. Decentralize the command structure. You don't have to centralize the command structure from, from, from every state down to Abuja before you have the final line of authority for decisions are taken. So if we can't have state policing, let's centralize the command structure. Let 
or if you still want to maintain the draft police, he said the governor by the constitution is the chief security officer of the state. So let the commissioner of police report to him. The discipline and control and promotions of the police should be decentralized. It's, it's very, very clear. Now, someone that has never lived in the community, you bring him to come and be the police commissioner. You bring him to come and be the DPU. You bring him to come and be the area commander of areas that is not familiar with, is not, is not knowledgeable of. And after two, two or three years, you post or one month or six months, you post that person away from that from that from that area. Policing is local, like you say, uh, politics is local. It's the same thing with policing. Policing is local. You have to localize the, You have to localize the, 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 the appointment and the promotion and the and the placement of people when it comes when it comes to, when it comes when it comes to policing. There's no way someone that did not grow up in our world. We know about our more than someone bring two police officers. One grew up in our grew up in the community. Let me use the community. And another did not grow up in that community. The one that grew up in that community knows the community better than the one that did. because policing is about guarding intelligence. It's about crime prevention. It's about crime prevention. You prevent the crime before it happens. And it has to do with intelligence gathering. But you know what? We have a reactive policing system. We wait for the crime to happen before we, be, be, before we, before we take actions. And it has affected every aspect of our lives. Even when it comes to traffic regulation, you will see last month and the police waiting for someone driving the crime, driving his car, to commit the crime before they arrest the person. Other than tell the person, oh, you can't turn here, you need to move forward. Instead of directing the person to do the right thing, they will wait and you see six, seven, eight of them jumping in front of the car to effect an arrest. I don't know. I just, I just, <laughs> <laughs> some, <laughs> some people some people say, you know, the day cars are, are banned in Nigeria or we don't need cars anymore, they wonder what the police will do, <laughs> what they will spend their time doing. Because there seems to be this obsessive preoccupation or focus on, on cars. Cars, 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 cars. My word. Um, um, well, well, still stay with the or, or, or issues regarding that. Um, we told that uh, uh, reps, the House of Reps want a raid on the forest reserves in the area, um, you know, to go after, this is still the front page of the punch newspaper, by the way. Uh, so, yeah. Listen. But I like, I like to link it to something, Jimmy Johnson, if you, if you permit me very quickly to link it to something. Okay. Yeah. Um, whilst the House of Reps is saying there should be a raid on the forest reserves in the area, um, as far as the, the abducted uh, or kidnapped leaders of the Ogun Church, the church in Ogua concern, if you remember, some days ago, the abductors have reduced their ransom to 10 million naira. They're threatening to kill three victims. Now, I want you to put that side by side with what we're seeing on uh, below the picture, the big picture there on the front page of the punch, where 17,000 policemen have been deployed for the Kiti State election. And one would wonder if you can have such a huge amount of policemen at a time, leaving what they're doing, their primary assignments to go for an election, why can't they be deployed for, for this rate that the House of Reps is talking about? I've said that our election is heavily militarized. If you have a true democratic process, you don't need this amount of security um, or this level of security to conduct an election. When we do elections, it's like a seat, it's like a, it's like a military seat, and it's not like a democratic election. And you wonder where our police could they deploy their men and 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 their personnel and their, and, and their resources to cover elections. But they find it so difficult to deploy their resources to maintain their primary, primary function, which is to maintain law and order in the society. Now, for the reps calling on um, the forest, do they need to call on anybody to check the forest? Uh, you recall that the Methodist bishop that was, that was, that was Methodist clergy that was that was kidnapped, and they gave a, a comprehensive account of where how they were kidnapped, where they took them to, his knowledge of the area, what has been done to that, and the complicit um, nature of some security agencies. What has been done to that that effect? 
You have a situation where by everybody is on your, on your own. Nobody has left than every one of us <coughs> to fend for ourselves. If And then you wonder, when you have the amount of money that is being paid for ransom, you wonder, this money was gotten from the bank. This money was sent to some certain people. And were there, are there no ways to trace? And then we said we have a cashless policy. Are there no ways to trace all of this? Which comes down to community policing. Again, in the past, everybody used to police the environment. If a stranger comes to a neighborhood and it's, people are suspicious of what the stranger is doing with respect to his businesses, and with respect to the lifestyle he's living, they will report to the police in the past. But these days, if they report to the police, it is the police themselves that will expose you to whoever you have reported to them. So everybody is just keeping quiet and just living life and hoping that all, all is well. All right. Um, we have more papers to look at today. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, let's let's go over to the Daily Independent. They're giving some space to um, uh, what the uh, FAAN uh, is saying, and not just the FAAN. We're looking at also the issue of licenses on free trade zones at airport. Uh, the issue of the Tinapa business uh, and leisure resort has come up uh, for attention. It's been on YouTube or social media for some time with a young man who did a, a piece about the uh, sorry state of tourism in Cross River State. But the headline on the front page of a um, Daily Independent uh, reads, a police policy somersault, poor infrastructure killed $60 billion Tinapa investment. I'm sure you're very aware of the buzz that uh, Tinapa uh, created and the, the promise that it held. Um, this is what we hear in policy somersault, uh, poor infrastructure uh, killed 60 a billion dollar Tinapa investment fund suspends issuance of licenses on free trade zones at airports. I'll just read a, a, a sentence or two from that story, uh, J.D. Johnson. It says, stakeholders uh, in the free trade zone in Nigeria have lamented the inconsistent government uh, policies and lack of infrastructure that led to the death of Tinapa Resort in Cross River State. Uh, the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria has also, uh, with immediate effect, suspended the issuance of licenses to applicants on the free trade zones at the nation's airports until the conflicts in the regulatory framework uh, between it and the Nigerian Export Processing Zones, NEBSA, uh, Export Processing Zones Authority, NEBSA, are resolved. Uh, this is uh, speaking out on Thursday at the ongoing maiden edition of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria National Aviation uh, Conferences. Um, so that's where they spoke. Um, when they talk about policy somersault, I do remember that one of the issues was um, uh, waiving of uh, tariffs for Tinapa. It was a big issue that uh, hampered its growth. And then the dredging of the Calabar River to allow the boats or the ships bring in goods. So that's where we talk about infrastructure, policy and infrastructure. Yeah, can you imagine that there's no connecting line between Calabar? You recall, by administrative purpose, Calabar was the first um, administrative capital of what we call Nigeria. And then you have a port in Calabar. Um, just look at the business. The, the, just look at if there is a linkage in terms of rail network, in terms of good road system between Calabar and Lagos. Look at the corridor, the business corridor. It will create, and not the one from, not the one from um, from from Kano to Maradi that we have that was done by this present administration. Look at the 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 the, 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 the kind of tree that will be generated from, from from that. Now you are talking about listing, linking Central and East Africa with West Africa. But if you do something between Lagos and Calabar. Uh, which which are two strategic strategic um, cities in the history of, of 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 Nigeria. So when you talk, sometimes you wonder how we come about the various policies. Do we really want to do these policies to grow the economy and to develop in Nigeria, or are we personalizing this on the basis of primordial sentiment of ethnicity, religion, 
and and and, and, and prevent that list. That's 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 the situation. I, I was fortunate to be in Calabar too. I, I, I visited in that part uh, when it was when it was initially constructed. What what a wonderful what a wonderful what a wonderful place. And the goal was to develop Tinapa and then you go to Ogoja to, to develop Ogoja. Ogoja too and then where people could go do their movies and do everything they want to do and a basic tourist attraction. And tourism for I, I was I was exposed to a clip where what is what was used to grow the United Arab Emirates economy? It was tourism. And I read, I read in the papers that about 15% of Russian oligarchs are, are, are about leaving Russia because of the current crisis. And where are they going to? They are going to United Arab Emirates because it's a tourist, it's a tourist hotbed. <coughs> so it's unfortunate that the government that took over in Cross River State did not pursue, after Donald Duke, did not pursue the Tanapa. Uh, um, project the way Donald Duke went after that terror project. And you ask yourself the question: It was PDP government that succeeded another PDP government. It was a friend that succeeded. It was a child friend that succeeded his friend. However, where you have personalization of state issues, and that's the major problem that we have in Nigeria. That we disagree on 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 issues does not make us enemy. And then that I challenge your authority does not mean that I hated you. We get better ideas in the, in the, in, uh, on the basis of debates and discussion. But we live in a culture whereby people don't tolerate dissenting people. We live in a culture whereby people don't want debate. They just want you to concur with them. They don't want you to reason with them and, and tag out. They just want you to tag along with whatever ideas they have. And whereas in the body of counsel, they accept it. You must agree to disagree. So that's the situation. Policies of government, programs of government are personalized. And they are not they are not looked at in the larger, in the larger, in the larger, in the larger, in the larger interest. <coughs> and that's why we have seen different types of policy some assault over 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 the years. A really unfortunate uh, uh, situation with Tanapa and the current said, I'm sure if you go there. Uh, you would uh, weep or at least a little tear will come to your eye. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, thank you very much for your expert analysis. As always, it's been a pleasure having you uh, on Off the Press. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to and good morning. Thank Have you. Have a wonderful weekend. All right, thank you. Um, uh, we'll check out what happened today in history, and after that, we'll return to launch into a first major conversation right here on The Breakfast. Please stay with us.